On this episode of Seen in Asia, we'll be bringing you along for a weekend trip to majestic Situgunung Sukabumi, where we'll camp out in style, trek across some rather perilous bridges, and of course, enjoy the crystal clear waters of the region's many iconic waterfalls. Jakarta. Sometimes you love it, sometimes you hate it. But whatever your feelings may be, five days out of the week, you need to endure it. But what happens when the weekend comes and you need to breathe in some fresh, smog-free air? Well, do we have the answer for you? Because right now, we're going to go all the way south to Sukabumi to show you exactly what you can do if all you have is the weekend and you want a quick getaway. So, without further ado, let's take a ride. Let's go. The first part of our journey into Java's second largest regency takes us to the Situgunung Tourist Park region of the Mount Gede Pangrango National Park which is located a mere three-hour drive south of Jakarta. This park, which is considered the oldest national park in Indonesia, is a perfect getaway if you're looking for a quick weekend trip. Situgunung boasts breathtaking views, gorgeous waterfalls, and comfortable accommodations nestled deep within its breezy forests. As you make your way to the camping ground, you're going to come across this, the longest suspension bridge in all of Asia. And now just a warning for those of you who are afraid of heights, maybe skip this one because you're going to go across this huge valley and it is quite scary. Might be a good thing for you who are thrill seekers out there because the bridge does get a bit wobbly especially when it's really windy or there's a lot of people on the bridge, but it's all worth it just to get these sweet, sweet views. And it's truly breathtaking. Feels like I'm in Jurassic Park, except, you know, there are no dinosaurs. It is actually the longest suspension bridge in Southeast Asia. But even so, this 80 ton, 243 meter long behemoth is truly a sight to behold. The valley underneath is a little over 100 meters high. And if you're brave enough to take a peek down, the valley almost seems endless. But rest assured, every safety measure has been set in place to ensure that guests can cross safely every time. But if you're the type to feel queasy at any height taller than your local swimming pool's diving board, you won't find much comfort there. You will find comfort, however, in the camping grounds that lie just ahead of the end of the bridge. Just be wary of the campsite's occasional furry visitors. Thankfully, during our visit, they were content to simply use one of the larger tents' roof as a makeshift trampoline. 
this is what I was waiting for. In here, 12 tents surround a sizable gathering area where people can eat, rest on the hammocks, or enjoy the warmth of the campfire during nighttime. Guests are free to grab a cup of coffee or tea at a nearby canteen, which also serves hot food every morning. And this will be our tent. All of the tents in the camping grounds fit at least four people. Ours came equipped with a king-size bed, two single beds, and a bathroom complete with a water heater, and even a bathtub. And as you can see all the way in the back here, you can find my favorite part of the tent, which is this uh, rope bed contraption thing. I don't know what exactly it's called, but I know that it's very comfy. Also makes me feel like Spider-Man. But also, you get such a cool, nice breeze out here. It feels like it's a whole room full of air conditioning, which actually we don't have, but you don't need to because out here in the nature, already feels too cool you don't even need AC and it's a great place to chill and just honestly you can take a nap here if you want the ropes are surprisingly comfortable so if you don't mind I will take a little bit of rest I may have gotten a little carried away with my nap as I awoke with the sun tucked away beneath the horizon. And as the winds got colder, I settled into warmer clothes and enjoyed some grilled corn on the cob, which is provided free for each night we'll be staying. Spending the night out in the forests, a million stars shining above you, in front of a roaring fire that keeps you warm, nothing can beat that. As a new day dawns, a new adventure begins. Today, we woke up bright and early to prepare ourselves for a four-hour trek to Lembah Purba, an area located deep within the forests, which is the site of a breathtaking pair of twin waterfalls surrounded by ancient trees. But of course, getting there is an adventure all on its own. We begin the morning with a trek, a roughly four hour trek. We're going to the Lembah Purba. And you see a lot of bridges and a lot of waterfalls. It'll be a great time overall. It's a great day. It's really cold out here. You know, you wake up, it's really cold. Uh, it's hard to take a shower because everything's so cold. But thankfully, here in the glamping to the Gunung, they have hot water. So that is a blessing. So let's get this trek on the road. It was only a short while after we began our track that we encountered our first bridge. And let me just tell you, it is not for the faint of heart. If you thought that the first suspension bridge was scary, you haven't seen anything yet. Just be prepared, because this is the Tarzan Bridge. 180 meters of sheer terror and although I was fully equipped with the proper safety equipment and with my carabiner constantly staying attached to the railing along the bridge the constant swaying which rocked the bridge from left to right did very little to calm my nerves and as I got more nervous the more the bridge shook all I had to do was brace myself Focus on the end of the bridge, and most importantly, don't look down. Eventually, after what felt like ages, we finally made it across. 
and the worst was finally behind us. Okay, we survived that one. First bridge down. Thankfully, my guide tells me this is the scariest out of all the bridges, so thank God we got that out of the way. Only tip for those coming through here, don't look down. What a way to start the day, huh? If we weren't awake before, we were certainly wide awake now. But of course, that was only the start of our adventure. There was still roughly another hour or two until we reached Lembah Purba, and the trek after the Tarzan Bridge was no less challenging, while albeit a lot less scary. Several bridges were scattered across our trekking route, some big, some small, and others very small. It's undoubtedly a long trek, but a boring one it is not. Along the trek, you're met with gorgeous sights of tall, lush trees. Calm and crystal clear streams of cold, refreshing water. And the symphony of nature surrounding you, coming from all manner of wildlife that you could not even see. We were so enamored by the sights and sounds that we didn't even realize we had finally arrived at our intended destination. The Ancient Valley or Lembah Purba. As you slowly approach the area, you'll feel an unmistakable feeling of a cold mist being sprayed on your face. A nice refreshing welcome after a long and arduous trek. And then, from behind the trees, you finally see the twin waterfalls in all its glory. Limba Purba truly lived up to its name. Walking into this area, felt like stepping into a different world entirely, untouched by human hands. Woo! As long as you ignore the large wooden walkway that allows visitors to get as close as possible to the waterfall, while still being safe. We are now right underneath, I mean not exactly underneath, but really close to the waterfall and I'm being pelted by water. It's so, so cold here. I don't even know if you can hear me. And I want to say something a bit more profound, but I can't even hear myself sink. So I guess I'll see you on the other side. Indeed, if you had any delusion of going through this trek completely dry, you've got another thing coming. That was a ride. So, I don't know if you can see it on me right now, I'm soaked. And I mean, of course, you can imagine being right over there, not exactly under the waterfall itself, but so, so close right there. You can feel just the rush of air and water. It's honestly quite refreshing after such a long trek. It feels like you're already taking a bath right now, honestly. But it's all worth it, right? I mean, I'm having fun, so. You should too. Begrudgingly, I had to leave the majestic ancient valley behind and continue my trek back to the campsite. But before I truly left the waterfalls behind, I got one last glimpse on the upwards climb of the nearby bridge, which goes up at an almost 90 degree incline. By far, making it the most exhausting of all the bridges on the trek. The rest of the trek was relatively calm and easy, as it appears the route takes visitors through its most challenging obstacles first, before finally winding down to its eventual conclusion. Upon 
reaching back to the first outpost where we began our adventure this morning, we took off our harnesses and sat down for a much deserved late lunch. Very much looking forward to the epic nap that we'll have very soon after. The next morning brought with it the usual chilly mountain weather, something a city boy like me isn't too accustomed to. A hearty breakfast and a warm cup of tea became my two best companions during this time of day. Seeing as it's way too early and way too cold for any outdoor activity, the logical thing to do would be to throw myself back on my cozy bed and sleep until the weather is a little bit more agreeable. But. We didn't go all this way to be logical, so let's go find ourselves a waterfall. Sukabumi, as you know by now, is known for its beautiful waterfalls. There are dozens of waterfalls waiting to be explored. And today, I will continue my journey to visit the Sawer Waterfall, or Churuk Sawer, as it is known in Sundanese. The waterfall is a relatively short distance from the camping grounds, making it an ideal excursion if you don't have time or willpower to stray too far from the camp. Churuk Sawer is much smaller than the Churuk Kembar of Lembah Purba, but it is no less beautiful, especially if you come by right before midday as the sun peeks through the nearby hills and bathes the waters in its warm orange glow. Churuk Sawer can't compete with Lembah Purba in terms of sheer scale, but one thing it has that Lemba Purba doesn't is that it's swimmable. So, you know, most sane, reasonable people would advise against swimming in freezing cold water when the temperature around you is already sub 20 degrees Celsius. But you are not sane like myself then you're welcome to do so because the water is amazingly fresh. It's so clear, it feels great on your skin. Plus, you get a great view of the waterfall right there. And as long as you pay attention to the warnings, where you can and can't go, you're bound to have a great time. This particular spot here, the water is really calm, it's a great place to dip. So, if you don't mind me, I'm gonna do some more. Swimming in the calm Churuk Sawer waters is a great alternative to your morning shower, as long as you don't mind the cold. But if swimming is not for you, then you can also have fun with the nearby river tubing attraction, where you can ride the river current down on a single person tube. With my body refreshed, and my senses awakened, I am ready to check off the last thing on our Siru Gunung bucket list. Ride the flying fox across the majestic Situ Gunung Lake. For this one, I gotta bring my A-game. But before that, as we walked back up to the first checkpoint, we saw a traditional Sundanese gamlang greeting and a wave of new visitors. They were even kind enough to let me join in their orchestra. Sure, I may only be playing two notes, but hey, at least I'm on beat. After 
After my short stint as a gamelan player, we made our way up to the hill where the flying fox starts. The zip line will take visitors high above the lake of which Situgunung was named after. Local legends say that the lake was made by a nobleman from the old Mataram kingdom called Bajalun, who escaped central Java during the colonial era and settled here in West Java. The lake is said to be Mbajalun's way of expressing his gratitude for the birth of his son. Unfortunately, as I readied myself for my flight, the significance of the local culture was the last thing on my mind. Okay, so this is the part where I'm supposed to say something really cool, like to infinity and beyond or something. But honestly, I'm getting some nerves. It's a really high, really long dive, so I'll see you on the other side. Okay, let's go. Woo! And just like that, off I went. Okay, that was that. Oh, that was a lot faster than I thought, to be honest. But, quite a big view up there. Indeed it was. And so ends our weekend excursion into this majestic land. And just like the flying fox, it felt like the journey ended a little too quickly. A fleeting moment of wonder, only to be swiftly brought back down to earth, back to normalcy. But if you come here like us, weary and exhausted, you'll leave reinvigorated and re-energized comforted with the thought that a tranquil escape from city life is only a short drive away.